So I wanted to give you a quick update where I am with my JBL Charge 4. Now I did say in my original video, my initial impressions were favorable. In fact, they were more than favorable. I quite liked it a lot. And I thought it was a decent upgrade over the Charge 3. I did say, by the way, my opinion can very well change. It's not unusual, not only for me, for many people. You start with the speaker, like in certain aspects, and then gradually, some things become annoying, some things you like even more and it becomes a great speaker. However, as I said, I believe not only in speaker or driver burning, but I also think ears burning. That's my opinion, that's my theory. Because your opinion of the speaker does change as you trial it, as you listen to more genres, different volumes. And I want to give you an update because I did say in my original video, yes, it's great, and I'm saying, yeah, go, go ahead and buy it. I'm now tempering what I said. I still like it, but I only like it for 30 minutes. Let me explain. I like it for 30 minutes because it's got the typical in your face, what's become the stock tuning for JBL. It's what I would call a bit of a smiley face, although not really, not over the top. However, in listening to it, what you get overwhelmingly is that bass, is the low end which is really pleasing for the first 30 minutes and then becomes a little bit wearing if, as in this case, it's a mono speaker, there's no real dimensionality to it, there is no real detail. You can pick out instruments and vocals come forward, yes, but there's no peering into the music. There's no analyzing your music as such. Now, if you just want it for a party, great. It's a good speaker, better than the Charge 3 for that. But if it's for a longer listen, if you like the Charge 3 for what it was, which was more of a, an easy listen, you know, a bit more mellow. It wasn't the boosted treble, the boosted, in fact, almost no treble, let alone a boosted treble and a boosted bass. It was sounded more balanced. To me, more mellow and pleasing, and it sounds great as a stereo pair. Now, the Charge 4 isn't quite like that. It's a little bit more accurate, but it's wearing, there isn't the detail, it's not quite got the clarity, or that's got very nice forward vocals, it hasn't got the clarity of the Charge 3. Now, I'm only giving you an update because I'm tempering what I said originally. I don't want to give people the wrong idea that I just think it's the better speaker than the Charge 3 and it's end of chat. I have found it a little bit wearing and I've gone back to the Charge 3 for a longer listen. It is fun, it is a party speaker, it's probably better outdoors, however, the big thing about why I wanted to do this video is because I was absolutely staggered and gobsmacked and outraged that yes, what I thought could never, ever, ever happen again, the Charge 4 is not as loud as the Charge 3. I haven't tried it powered up on USB, but on battery, Charge 4 does not go as loud as the Charge 3 by a considerable margin. I was staggered. I'm saying that because that's what happened with the Extreme 2. I did not think that would happen again. And I, when I did my initial impressions, and that's, please, some people have been saying, well, thank you for your review. It wasn't a review. My review will be down the road and it'll be on a video that says, this is my review. That was my first impression because I know my impressions changed. Yours may not ever change from the first time you hear a speaker, but for me and for a lot of people, as you listen, and as you have longer, to, longer with it, more genres, your opinions do change. So. I still like it, but with the condition that not for a prolonged listen and not for a relaxed listen. As I said, I'm going to get on to a proper comparison. That wasn't a review of the first one, and that's not a review of this one. This is my update. This is where I am with the speaker. And I, when I've compared it with everything and done every, oh, answered all the questions that I'm hoping to answer, I will do a final video wrapping up everything with my final opinion, and that will be the review. Just to say, at this point, one of the things I do want to point out is I bought two JBL Charge 4s. I have a problem with one of them. Now, I didn't know the way they use Connect had changed and they rearranged the buttons. So how it should work now is you turn it on. It makes connection with your Bluetooth. The Bluetooth light comes on. When you want to use Connect and how you will know Connect is on is you press Connect the surround lights up. Now, I want to point out that because my other JBL Challenge 4 does not work that way. So, yeah, it tells me when Bluetooth is connected. By the way, it doesn't tell me if it's, if it's active with my phone. You'll see the, the light, the Bluetooth has come on. It tells me Bluetooth is active, but it's 
this is the one that's connected with my phone. But if I want to use connect, I'm assuming this is 40. The light is not coming on around the JBL chose four. So if you only bought, if I'd only bought one, I wouldn't even know it was 40. Just to say, it should look like that with a surround when in connect mode. But one of my JBL Charles four doesn't light up. And I have issues trying to use this as the first speaker that connects with the app. So I can't even use the app with this one if it's the main one the phone is connected to. I have to connect to that one as the main one, and then I can go into the app, and then I can see both speakers. And by the way, even if it's a Charge 4 and a Charge 3, won't play in stereo. I thought it might. I thought it would. But even though kind of the same generation won't let you play in stereo. Not for me anyway. So I'm going to turn these off. And get back to where I am now with the two speakers. Now, first of all, when I did my original first impressions, I only listened at around 40% volume. And I gave my first impressions on that. And that is why it was called first impressions. Now I've got more impressions. This is comparing them together at 53% volume. Center, but it's a cold world Shout out my homies that know me, can't forget my old girl But that's a touchy subject like a priest woke I heard y'all finally eating over there, we got a feast though Keep it rap pack, to the beat go You might not get the flow now, let it seep though Fans know my lyrics deeper than the sea flow But we dumb it down so they spin it on the radio Racism all up in them, that shit is irrelevant My flow is colorblind, rapping for the hell of it I don't give a Never thought I'd make it shooting for the stars Yeah, I'm a born sinner, but it's a cold world Shout out my homies that know me, can't forget my old girl But that's a touchy subject like a priest woke I heard y'all finally eating over there, we got a feast though Keep it rap pack, to the beat go You might not get the flow now, let it seep though Fans know my lyrics deeper than the sea flow But we dumb it down so they spin it on the radio Racism all up in them, that shit is irrelevant My flow is colorblind, rapping for the hell of it I don't give a uh, you, 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 my baby, baby, baby If I'm with you, I'm just little girl
looking at the Charge 4 versus the Charge 3, playing them both at 53% volume, they do actually play around the same volume. The difference is in how the sound is spread. So the Charge 4, the Charge 3. So the first thing I can see that surprised me against an actual listen, the Charge 4 actually looks slightly more mid-focused than the Charge 3, which doesn't really sound like that in reality. I think this is down to the fact that the Charge 4 is a much thicker and fuller sound. So the Charge 3 sounding a bit thinner probably gives it an impression of being clearer, but there's nothing here to suggest why it would sound clearer. And if I look at the original four tracks in terms of accuracy, while I'm not saying either one of them is particularly accurate or detailed, the Charge 4 is clearly more accurate. If you look at the slope on those, that original four tracks, not only is the Charge 4, you know, with a slight boost, 300 to 1,000, it's, it's certainly more accurate than the Charge 3. And if you look at what looks like sporadic peaks around 4,500, 7,000, around 10,000, although they're not actually there completely in the original four tracks, there are peaks at those points. So in terms of accuracy, it's not doing a terrible job, obviously, you know, given the limits of this speaker, certainly more accurate than the Charge 3, to an extent that surprised me. I thought it was just gonna be a lot heavier on the bass. I thought it would go a lot deeper than the Charge 3. The graphs say something different. So the Charge 3, you almost think, looking at that, it's got a more bass heavy sound. So the bass peak is around 70 hertz, is about the same charge four, charge three. There's a little bit of difference in the roll off is a little bit steeper on the charge three. So although there's, it's a little bit more of the peak heavy on the charge three, you don't really get that in reality. And the charge four does have a slightly slower roll off. The main difference being when you take the bass as a whole. So if you, take the bass as being from about 250-300 hertz, which is upper bass, down, and you look at that point onwards, so 300 down to the, the bass peak, as a whole, there's a lot more in the Judge 4, and that's, I think, it's the upper bass is where it really gets its bass heavy sound in comparison to the Charge 3, because upper bass is not the strong point of the Charge 3. Certainly the, the, the kind of the mid bass, but the upper bass is completely lacking compared to that peak. So if I'm looking at trying to explain what I hear and what I'm seeing as the differences between the two, the Charge 4 has a fuller bass when you take the entire spectrum of the bass into account, not just bass peak. And all across, it is a more forward sound, as you can see. The Charge 3, Charge 4, I was expecting to see more mid peaks on the Charge 3, and I'm not really seeing it. I can only imagine the reason why, in reality, to me, the Charge 4 is a little bit more tiring to, to listen to than the Charge 3, although it's clearly more accurate and it's clearly a fuller sound. I think it lacks details, and I think that's what's probably, it's just all you're really getting is the bass, and while you're getting the sound, you're not getting any much detail. I would imagine a lot of it down to the fact that it's a mono driver. So kind of was my first impressions, however, on a quick listen, I didn't really get how actually the Charge 3 does sound clearer. It sounds more anemic on AB listening. That's why on AB listening, the Charge 4 does stand up well because it's a fuller sound. It's got a really pleasing bass. It's the bass you keep hearing, and yes, it's pleasing and it's full. But on the long run, I found it a little bit over-egged. However, it did seem quite accurate. I'm just saying for me and listening, and you know, listening is not the same as looking at a graph. It's just helpful. I just find it all interesting. But the main reason for the video, the main reason I'm saying, oh my God, JBL, what have you done? At maximum volume.
So this is <laughs> completely took me by surprise. This I'm a little bit gobsmacked because the Charge 3 is louder than the Charge 4. I confirmed it by both sound pressure level meter and by looking at the graphs and analyzing the actual tracks themselves. The Charge 3, the Charge 4, just on a quick look by the way, the bass peak on the Charge 4, yeah, it looks like there's more bass going on. So there's a slight bit of the peak there but overall the sound even the actual peaks when you analyze a track are louder on the charge 3 and you can see it's going on in the mids where the charge 3 is clearly now properly mid focused so overall using a sound pressure level meter the charge 4 is 2.6 decibels quieter so using my sound pressure level meter while well, you can argue about how accurate it may or may not be it's going to be the same for both the speakers. So in terms of relative differences, 2.6 decibels, the Charge 4 quieter than the Charge 3 at maximum volume. If you actually analyze the tracks themselves, the average loudness Charge 4 is 2.5 decibels quieter than the Charge 3. Again, confirming the sound pressure level meter. In terms of peaks, the Charge 3 is 3.8 decibels louder than the Charge 4 in overall peaks. It was gobsmacking to me. And no matter how I, <laughs> I measure it, that is what I found with my Charge 4. So I was and am kind of gobsmacked because the official specs for the JBL Charge 4 is one times one driver, 30 watts. The specs for the Charge 3 two times 10 watts, two drivers each at 10 watts, 20 watts, 30 watts. How on earth can the Charge 4 not play as loud as the Charge 3? Now, is the clue that they are both rated for up to 20 hours battery. Have they done what maybe they did with the Extreme 2? Decrease the loudness so they can claim a, what should be a mixed use figure battery life of 20 hours. I don't know. Or is it the apparent bug that they said they had an Extreme 2? Because when they took the limit off the Extreme 2's 20 watt to 30 watt limit, they just said it was to fix a bug. Is it really another bug? I don't know. I mean, it, it just seems extraordinary. How can it possibly be? Given that they, they're, you know, if they had said, oh, they're both 20 watts, and you think, oh, well, there's a bit more bass, it's using a bit more power, that's why it doesn't go quite as loud, or something like that. But they're saying 30 watts, 20 watts, it should be louder. Nearly three, two and a half decibels, nearly three decibels, it's like almost half the power. If that's 20 watts, it's almost as though, now I know it's a new driver, we've seen these pictures, we've seen the strip downs. But otherwise you would have said they've just taken one of the 10 watt drivers and stuck it in there and they're both the same driver. Doesn't make sense, anyway. I just wanted to give this interim video to say, blimey, something to consider if you're looking to upgrade your Charge 3 to the Charge 4, if you play it a lot of maximum volume, and of course it doesn't sound great at maximum volume, but it's okay, it's just that you're losing almost all the bass. If you do that with Charge 3, you do not want to get a Charge 4, because it, it won't even be as loud as that. So, just something to bear in mind. I found it, find it a bit tiring, but if you don't listen like I do, if you don't have my taste, you may well like the bass heavy sound, but there is a little less clarity than you had with the Charge 3, but it's a fuller sound. It's more accurate, no doubt about it, but it doesn't go as loud. And I find it a little bit tiring. These are things to take on board. If you're going by my opinion, and if you're looking at my personal uh, reviews, then what appeared to be a great big thumbs up in my first impressions, and I still think it's a, it's a, it's a kind, you know, I can't say it actually replaces. If they called this the Charge 3.5, I was like, well, fair enough, they're two different, two different options, two, half, two different speakers, but given that this is supposed to be replacing that, I think really something that's replacing something should at least have the same sound tuning. It doesn't have the same tuning as the Charge 3. You could argue it's better, but it's different. It's not as relaxed. So 
that's my interim till my next one, you know, and I will be going on to compare it with how does it sound with the Flip 4 and all the others and two of them against the Extreme and in stereo, pipe mode, down the line, there's a lot to do. I'd like to answer them when I get time. I just wanted to give you my interim thoughts because maybe I was a little bit too thumbsy uppy in my original video. So now it's like, mm, mm, you know? So I think it's a decent speaker. If I'd never heard the Charge 3, I think, oh, not too bad. Quite a lot of bass, isn't it, for the, for the size? But you know, it doesn't go quite as loud as I'd like. But that's where I am at this point in time. So please continue to look out for my other videos where I will give you more updates and try to answer you know, the questions that people are asking and I'd like to answer myself, just like I did with the volume. I couldn't believe two and a half decibels. I mean, no matter how I'd, I did it, whether actually with a standalone sound pressure level meter or analyzing the actual tracks themselves. So thank you for watching. UK.